me down. Let's bring it to 48. Okay. And I'll also and change the Y rotation here from minus 10. Let's set it to minus 9. All right. Now I have the heads up display here in place. Okay, it looks pretty nice. And now I'll hit Shift A and add mesh cylinder. You can see our cylinder here. I'll hit Z once to switch to wireframe mode and Z twice to switch to solid view for the viewport shading. And I'll change the amount of vertices here for my circle from 32 to 56. And I'm switching to solid view so I can walk easier with my objects and scene. And again for my cylinder here, I'll also change the cap fill type from end gone to nothing. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode. I have every vertex here selected and I'll hit R, X and 90 to rotate my cylinder here for 90 degrees on the X axis. I'll hit 1 on my mirror keypad to switch the front author view. And I'll hit the S key to scale my cylinder here up. And I'll scale it up 20 times. Okay. At least for this scene, it's at about 20 times. You can see we want our cylinder here to be where, our, where uh, this part here ends. Okay. Now I'll hit 7 on my mirror keypad for the top author view. And hit S and Y to scale on the Y axis. I'll scale it up on the Y axis. OK. Now another thing you have to do before moving on. And I've hit 0 on my memory keypad to switch to camera perspective view. Is that the cylinder here won't be displayed as it is. And that's because the object normals by default point outside. And since our camera and our scene pretty much is in the cylinder. What you have to do before moving on is to flip the normals direction. OK. So now I'll hit the Tab key to switch back to Object mode. And I want to add a material to my cylinder here. Move over to the Material panel. Click New. For a new material. And perhaps let's use the Hexa. The Hexa 1 material for our cylinder. I'll click this two, I click this two icon here to create a unique material for my cylinder. And I'll call this one cylinder okay and I'll change the uh, gradient here the ramp here and selecting the white color and I'll make this one darker and I'll also change the specular intensity bring it down to 1.5 or to 0 0.1 excuse me from 0 0.5 now uh, switch over to the texture viewport shading mode I want to be able to take a good look at my scene and what I'll do is select my sun lamp here and I'll bring the energy value down from 1 I'll set it to 0 0.5 I want my scene my entire scene to be slightly darker and I'll select the uh, point lamp as well and I'll bring the energy for this one down to 0 0.3 now I'll hit 0 on my mirror keypad to switch to camera perspective view and I think this looks good I'll move over to the world options and I'll change the horizon color I'll set the horizon color to a strong blue color but I'll make it dark and perhaps even darker than that okay and we also have mist here selected and now we can hit the P key to take a look at our scene I think it all looks pretty nice we have the particles here appearing whenever I hold down 7, 8 and 9 on my mirror keypad and we are slowing our system down and speeding our system up and of course we have the uh, numpad 0 that rotates the empty and this empty is a parent of the lights and camera so when the empty rotates the lights and camera also rotate. Pretty nice result. You can see how we're rotating uh, while facing the center of the scene. And again, everything else is working as well. So we have the particles and the rotation. 
So I'll hit the escape key now to switch back to my 3D view. I think we're pretty good here. And uh, I want to add some animation here for my lamp. And I'll be using this one as well in Blender Game Engine. So moving over to the sun lamp options. And I'll bring my frame count here back to 1. And I'll take my cursor here over the color and hit the I key to insert a, uh, a keyframe for the first frame. So we have set the color here for the first frame. We have a keyframe. And I'll move over to frame, let's say, 75. And change the color. Let's make it a strong orange to uh, red color. And now I'll hit the I key to insert a keyframe for my color for frame 75. Now I'll move back to frame 1. OK. And I'll split my 3D view. And I want the top view to be a logic editor. And we have the lamp here selected. I'll hit the N key to make my properties here go away. And for the lamp, I want to add a sensor. I'll add a keyboard sensor. And I'll also add an action actuator. And for key here, I'm clicking the empty field. And I'm hitting the del key, the comma key on my mirror keypad. And what I want to happen here whenever numpad uh, del or comma is hit on our numeric keypad is I want this action here to take place and what will this action do? well it will uh, remember our animation here we're starting at frame 1 and ending at frame 75 for our lamp so I'll set the start to 1 I want my action actuator here to play an animation from frame 1 to frame 75 and which animation do we want it to play? we want it to play the lamp action animation and uh, last thing I'll change I'll change the play value here for the playback type to flipper so what we're telling Blender here is that we want whenever numpad comma or del uh, is hit in the Blender game engine whenever a key a specific key is hit in the Blender game engine we want to take the lamp action animation and play uh, the frames 1 to 75 in the Blender game engine. Now I'm expanding my 3D view and I'll hit 0 on my Mary Keeper to switch to camera perspective view and I'll hit the P key to take a look at our system here and I'll hold down the comma, the del key and you can see how this changes the illumination and pretty much changes the entire scene since the uh, since the light of the sun lamp is uh, changing color and we can also uh, do the following let's say uh, our lamp here and we can also move over to the render options and since we've uh, brought our uh, render here to blender game we have a list of different options from the standard render and we have a nice uh, new option called standalone player and this allows us to add some uh, nice stuff for our blender game engine projects like the anti-aliasing samples and i'll change the value here from off i'll set it up to 4 plus and i'll also change the resolution from 640 to 1024 for the x and 576 for the Y. So now if we hit the start key and I'll hit 0 to switch to camera perspective view, let's hit the start key to see how it looks. And I think it really looks pretty nice now. Okay. So we have the particles added. We are rotating our uh, central empty and the lamps and camera follow along we can slow down our system, we can speed up our system and we can do pretty much lot of things, lots of stuff and we can also hit the del key to change the color for the sun lamp and you can see how drastically this changes the scene 
and by setting the playback type to flipper, whenever I release the comma del key on my Mary keypad, the, uh, sun, the sun lamp color changes back to what the frame 1 color is. So hitting del and changing the lamp and releasing the del comma key on my Mary keypad and then it all goes back to the original color for the sun lamp. So I'll hit the escape key. I think this looks pretty nice. I'll save this. Click file, save as. And I'll save this one as heads up display 4. And then save as blender file. Okay, I'm pretty glad that we'll slowly putting everything together for a little toy here. And one more thing I'd like to say before moving on is that the Blender game engine uses a refresh rate of 60 frames per second and I'm actually recording this video tutorial using 15 frames per second so as you can imagine you'll be getting some choppiness whenever we preview our game for this video, for this video tutorial but the good news is that you'll be getting a silky smooth motion for the Blender game engine whenever you try to build your own game or your own system like this one and of course this means that you have a reasonable amount of faces and effects and stuff like that for your game. So moving on, I'm right clicking this frame to select the camera. And I'll move over to the camera object data, click the camera icon. And I'll bring my focal length from 18 down to 17. And I want to be able to see more through my camera frame. And I'll now right click the heads up display frame to select it and move over to the transform options for my frame and I'll change the scale, I'll scale down my frame just by a bit, set it to 0.27 for every dimension here okay alright I'm right clicking to select the camera again and we're at frame 1 and I'll now hit the I key to insert a location rotation keyframe for the camera at frame 1 now I'll move on to frame 60 and let's change the camera position I'll set the location here, the X location from 9 to 0 the Z location from minus 1 to 0 the Z rotation set it to 0 the Y rotation set it to 0 as well and I'll change the X, the X rotation here, bring it out from 95 to 90 and now we have a new position for our camera and I'll hit the I key to insert a location rotation keyframe. Now if I scroll back you can see, back to frame 1, you can see that what we got here is a simple camera animation. Starting from frame 1 and moving up to frame 60, where we can uh, see, where we can take a closer look at our system here. OK, so now I'll split my 3D view and what I want to do now is make Blender recognize this animation and use it in the Blender game engine and in order to do so I need a logic editor so I'm changing the app 3D viewport into a logic editor and hit the N key to hide the properties and we want the camera animation here to be triggered by a key so I'll add a keyboard sensor and I'll be using the backslash on my numeric keypad uh, click the empty key field and Blender is waiting for a key and hit the backslash and this uh, this sensor here will take us to the action actuator and we're pretty much doing what we did before with a little hexagon object here we want the animation to be applied in the game engine so click and drag to connect the output of the sensor to the input of the actuator and we want to uh, add the camera animation to our action actuator so select the camera action and as we set the animation before, we have the uh, motion here starting at frame 1 and the end frame is frame 60. Now I'll also change the playback here, click and change it from play to flipper. So what we're telling Blender now is that whenever numpad backslash is hit in the Blender game engine, we want uh, an action to take place and the action is the camera animation, the camera action starting at frame 1 and ending at frame 60 ok now I'm expanding my 3D view and I'll hit the P key for the Blender game engine and you can see we have our system, our toy here working I'm holding down 7, 8 and 9 on my numeric keypad to add the particles I can also hold down 0 to rotate the camera 
around the scene and now if I hold down the backslash you can see that we're playing the animation for the camera from frame 1 to frame 60 and we now take a closer look at our system and by setting the playback to flipper you can see that if I release the backslash on my numeric keypad we're moving back to frame 1 for the camera and back to the original position ok so I'm hitting the escape key this looks pretty nice and I'll now add an object to my scene I'll hit shift A to add mesh and ecosphere and I'll move over to the ecosphere settings bring the subdivisions down from 2 to 1 and I'll hit the S key to scale up my ecosphere let's scale it up 9 times ok and I'll move over to the object modifier for my object and click add modifier and I'll add the subdivision surface and I'm adding the subdivision surface because I want more faces here for my object to be used by the following modifiers and I'll set the view here for the subdivisions from 1 up to 2 ok now I'll click add modifier and add a displace modifier and what the displace modifier needs here is a texture so I'll click new and blender will create a texture for my displace modifier and what the displace modifier does is that uh, it affects the object geometry using a texture ok for the displace modifier I'll just change the strength from 1 to minus 1 alright looking good now I'll collapse my subsurf and my displace modifier and it's time for me to add another modifier and we'll add a build modifier now you can see anything and that's because the build modifier starts at frame 1 using this setting and it takes it uh, 100 frames to build the object and now if I scroll my timeline here you can see that as I move on the object is being built now for my ecosphere I click randomize for the build modifier and as you can see by clicking randomize blender uses random faces for my object here to appear in time and I'll also bring down the time the frame let's set it down to 16 ok and as you can see we're creating a, a nice shape a nice abstract object just by using object modifiers we are not modeling anything and this looks pretty nice I'll also add another subdivision surface modifier ok and time for a final modifier click add modifier and I'll add a solidify modifier and we've seen the solidify modifier before and what it does is that it adds some thickness to our object you can see our object here without and with the solidify modifier and I'll just change the thickness value from 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 ok and as I said before we just have a stack of modifiers here applied on a simple ecosphere and we're getting a nice abstract shape a nice abstract object so I like it I'll hit shift D for a duplicate you can see the duplicate here but I'll hit the right mouse button to cancel any movement for the duplicated ecosphere and only thing I'll do for this one is move over to the final modifier to the solidify modifier and click this X key to delete it so we now have two ecospheres and as you can see the uh, the second ecosphere the ecosphere that is now selected has no thickness okay and what I'll do now for my ecospheres is expand the modifiers and I'll apply them starting from the first one and moving down so I'll click apply to apply the subsurf modifier apply to apply the displays apply to apply the build modifier and apply to apply the second subsurf modifier and I'm selecting my first ecosphere and for this one we'll also apply the modifier starting from the first one click apply for the subsurf, apply for the displays apply for the build modifier, apply for the second displace modifier and I'll also apply the solidify ok looking good now I'll add a material to my uh, ecosphere here move over to the material panel click this little icon and I'll click new for a new material and I'll change the material name from material to glass ok and this will be a glass so I'll just 
check transparency and I'll bring the alpha value here from 1 down to 0 0.5 in order to add some transparency to my objects. Now, as I said before, feel free to experiment with your materials, create your own materials, your own, use your own settings, or even UV unwrap and add images to your uh, materials. What I'm simply doing here is uh, setting up some materials just to make it look nice. And what I'll also do for my glass material here is uncheck receive and cast buffered shadows. And you can realize that this is a glass object so we don't want it to cast and receive shadows. It'll just uh, make our scene here a mess. And for my glass material I'll also click ramp and we're adding a color ramp for the diffuse. I'll click the black color and set the alpha value up to 1. OK. And I'll also bring the black and white color together. Let's set the black position to 0 0.4. And clicking on the white color and change the position to 0 0.7. And what we got here is a nice ramp moving from black to white for the glass material. OK. Now I'm selecting my second ecosphere. Hit the right mouse button to select the second ecosphere. And I'll click new to add the material to this one as well. And I'll call this one wire underscore echo. OK. And for this material, we click wire because we want this one to be displayed as a wireframe. I'll bring the diffuse intensity up to 1, bring the specular intensity down to 0. And I'll also add some emission. I'll set the mid value here to 0 0.2 under the shading tab. And I'll change the diffuse color. OK. Now since this will be displayed as a wireframe, we can also move over to the object data here. And under the display, change the type from texture to wire. Now I'll hit 0 on my mirror keeper to switch to camera perspective view. And what I want for my two ecospheres here is to add some simple logic to them. So I'm splitting my 3D view again. Changing the top 3D view into a logic editor. And hitting the N key to hide properties. And for my ecosphere, I'll add an always sensor. We always want some motion to be applied to our object. Click and drag to connect them. And I'll apply some rotation for my ecosphere. I'll set the X value from 0 to 0 0.01. And we're adding just a tiny bit of motion for our ecospheres. And I'll set Y value to minus 0 0.01. All right. So we always have some rotation for our ecosphere. And this is the second ecosphere. I'm right clicking to select the, fir the first one. And I'll add the same logic to the first ecosphere. An always sensor and a motion actuator. Click and drag, connect them. And set the X rotation to 0 0.01. And Y rotation to minus 0 0.01. Now I'll expand my 3D view. And what I also want here is to make my horizon. I'll move over to the world options and I'll change the horizon color and I want to make my horizon here a bit brighter. OK. Now I'll move over to render options and let's click start under the standalone player tab to take a look. And you can see we have a little toy here. It all looks pretty nice. We have the ecospheres here. They're slowly rotating. I think they add a bit of something here, uh, an extra interest for our scene. And I think this looks pretty nice. I'll just hit the escape key and change the horizon color. Let's change it. And I'll bring it between the uh, green and the yellow here. Let's click here. And I'll also make it a bit brighter. All right. Now what I also want to do for my scene is add some 2D filters and I'm right clicking the frame to select the camera. And once more I'm splitting my 3D view. I need again a logic editor. And we have the camera logic here. You can see it. We have the keyboard sensor that takes us to the uh, action actuator and this is about the camera animation. And I'm going to collapse the sensor, the controller and the actuator. And also hit the N key to hide the properties. 
and we want to add it to the filter and our 2D filter will be triggered by a key in the Blender game engine so I'll click add sensor and add a keyboard sensor and we'll use the asterisk on our memory keypad click the empty key field, Blender is waiting for a key and hit the asterisk on your memory keypad and this sensor here will take us to the filter to the actuator okay click and drag from the uh, sensor output to the actuator input and let's select a 2D filter and I'll let's set it to sepia so what we're telling Blender now is that whenever numpad asterisk is hit during the Blender game engine a 2D filter will be applied on our scene and the 2D filter is the sepia filter so let's move over to the render tab and click start on the standalone player to take a look and we have a little toy here displayed and now if I hit the asterisk on my memory keypad you can see the sepia filter here applied and it looks pretty nice I think and I'll just hit the escape key and what I want to show you here is that you can have multiple 2D filters applied on your scene and in order to do that I'll click add actuator and add another 2D filter and for the second filter we'll use an invert filter and in order to make them work we'll set the uh, you can see the sepia filter here has a pass number set to 0 and I want the invert to be applied on top of the sepia filter so I'll set this, the pass number to 1 this one is applied first and this one is second and the nice thing we'll do here is click and drag for the controller from the controller output to the second filter to the actuator is that you can have a single sensor here triggering two actuators so when we hit numpad asterisk on our mail keypad we have two actuators working and it's the sepia and the invert filter the sepia here is applied first and then the invert so clicking start at the standalone player tab to take a look we have our system here everything works nice and I'll hit the asterisk and you can see that we have both the sepia and the invert filter applied and I think it looks pretty nice on its own you can as you can imagine you can add the particles or rotate the camera or do stuff like that and now I'll hit the escape key and what I want now for the Blender game engine is to have another key that will disable those two filters and in order to do that I'll click add sensor and add another keyboard sensor and again clicking the empty key field and I'm hitting the numpad minus and the numpad minus will be the key that will uh, disable my 2D filters here and in order to do that I'll use two more 2D filter actuators click add actuator and filter 2D now click and drag connect the sensor to the actuator and then bring the output from the controller to the second actuator and once more like we did before we have one sensor that uh, triggers two actuators in a blender game engine so whenever numpad uh, asterisk is hit we have those 2D filters here applied and whenever numpad minus is hit we have the remove filter option this is the default option and in order to remove both our 2D filters we'll set the pass one for the for this uh, actuator to 0 and for the bottom actuator we'll set the pass number to 1 so this actuator here is uh, the one that makes the sepia 2D filter go away and this actuator here is the one that makes the invert 2D filter go away so let's check it out, let's see how it works. I'm clicking start on the standalone player to take a look. And now I'll hit the asterisk on my numeric keypad and you can see both the filters here applied. And I'll hit the minus to uh, disable the filters and you can switch between them both. Hitting the asterisk and minus it's on and off for our filters looking good now I'll hit the escape key to move back to the blender interface and I'll expand my 3d view and I'll do one more thing I'll hit shift A and add mesa circle 
I want to add a circle to the center of the world. I'll set the amount of vertices from 32 to 16. OK. And now I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Object to Edit Mode and hit RX and 90 to rotate my circle for 90 degrees on the X axis. And I'll hit the E key to extrude, right mouse button click to cancel any movement for the extruded vertices and I'll hit the S key to scale them down. Now I'll hit A once to deselect all and A again to select all and I'll hit Ctrl N to recalculate my object normals to point outside. Now I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Edit to Object Mode and I want to add a material to my circle. Move over to the Material panel and I'll add an existing material, click this icon and I'll hit W and select the white wire material. And what I'll also do, I want this circle here to follow the camera and the light's rotation and in order to do that I'll make it a child of the empty here that uh, the camera and the lights use to rotate in the Blender game engine so I'm holding down the shift key selecting the empty and hit ctrl B to send parent to object ok now I'm hitting 0 on my way keypad to switch to camera perspective view and I'll hit the P key for the Blender game engine and you can see our little toy here we have everything working pretty nicely. We can see that we're adding particles for our system. We can hit zero on, my, on our numeric keypad to rotate the camera around the center. And we can also hit numpad backslash to zoom in and take a good look at our system. And of course, add materials while we're zoomed in. Add, excuse me, particles while we're zoomed in. And of course, you can hit the Del, the comma key on the numeric keypad to change the uh, color of the light and hence the atmosphere and the mood for our scene. And add the 2D filters and then remove the 2D filters. Okay, so this looks pretty, my, pretty nice. We have our system here working. We have, you can apply a ton of stuff and variation. You can slow down, speed up your system, add the particles and do lots and lots of stuff to uh, to interact with our nice little toy here so I'm hitting the escape key I like what I see and it's time to save it click file save as and I'll save this one as heads up display underscore 5 and click save as blender file so this is it this is our system and just a few words and a few things to do before wrapping up and what I find slightly irritating is that the fact we have this um, big space between those two circles and let's fix that I'll hit shift A and add mess let's add a circle this circle will use six vertices okay and now I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad to switch to top off of you and I'll hit the Z key to switch from uh, texture uh, shading mode to the wire shading mode for the viewport and I'll now hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode and I'll hit the S key to scale my circle up and about there ok and now I'll select this vertex hold down the shift key select 2 3 and 4 and hit F for a face and select 1 hold down the shift key 2 3 and 4 and hit F for a face. Now I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Edit to Object Mode and hit 1 on my mirror keypad to switch the front auth view. And I'll hit Z and Z to grab and move on the Z axis and I'll grab my circle and move it down at about here. OK. And as you can see our circle now covers the space between our two uh, circles. OK. I'll add a material to my circle, move over to the material panel, click new and I'll call this one black underscore floor and I'll bring the, uh, change the color, make it black, bring the diffuse intensity down to zero and the specular intensity down to zero and I'll also uncheck back face under the game settings, okay so I'm uh, hitting 0 on my memory keypad to switch to camera perspective view and change the viewport shading to texture and as you can see we now have this uh, black circle that prevents us from uh, seeing what's happening behind our uh, objects which is nice 
so this is it. I think our system looks pretty nice. We have a nice face count. We have uh, approximately 15,000 uh, faces for our system. And what I'd also like to show you is that you can add some few more stuff. And I'm right clicking to select the heads up display frame and changing my top 3D view into a logic editor. And we have some nice effects. I'll add an always sensor for the uh, heads up display frame and a filter to the actuator. And I'm just adding my uh, sensor and actuator because the frame has no, uh, is, not, is carrying no uh, logic. So we don't have a mess here. It's pretty simple. And what we always want is to have a 2D filter and let's add the motion blur 2D filter. And all you have to do now is increase the value from 0, let's set it up to 0 0.4. And I'll move over to render options. And I'll hit start on the standalone player. And let's see. And again, I hope that you can see it. And of course, I'm recording this at 15 frames per second. So I really hope you can see the difference. I really hope you can see the motion blur here applied. And the reason I won't be keeping the motion blur for my final scene is that it may slow down your uh, your PCs while trying to view the um, our toy. And there are lots of filters. Let's select the period here, and let's click start again to take a look. And as I said before, these effects can be applied one of top, on top of the other, as we've seen with the uh, invert and the sepia filter before. And you can create some interesting results for your toys or games. Okay, hitting the escape key again. And there is also a nice option in the 2D filter type. You can also select custom filter. And if you do a quick search on the web, I'm pretty sure you'll find lots of uh, filters built by Blender users from around the world and there are some nice ones like Depth of Field or Screen Space Ambient Occlusion and I won't be showing any just because I want to keep uh, this, um, this training here uh, free from coding or applying any code to our, uh, to our toy, to our little game so I'm deleting the actuator, the controller and the sensor. And there is one more thing I'd like you to see and it's under the render panel. And we have the stereo tab here and this is by default set to none and we can set it to stereo. And by default we have set the we have the stereo mode set to anaglyph and I'll change the A separate the I separation from 0 0.1 to 0 0.01. I've done a few tests and found that the lower value, the lowest actually value, the 0.01, looks better. You can always fiddle with the settings for the stereo setting. And now if we hit start under the standalone player, you can see. And I hope you do have some 3D glasses because I believe that it'll look pretty interesting with uh, 3D glasses put. And again, we have everything working here, everything moving nicely, and it's also 3D. Okay. Now I hit the escape key to move back to the Blender interface. And an important thing, whenever you want to distribute your game, and let's say that you want to send the, your game or your toy to someone who doesn't uh, use Blender, you can uh, distribute your game as a game engine runtime and let's see how you can do it and what I'll do is move uh, over to file and user preferences so when you're at Blender user preferences make sure you click the add-ons tab and under the categories I'll move to the game engine and just make sure you have uh, the game the game engine serve as game engine runtime checked before you can export your game and now I'll close the uh, user preferences and 
only thing you have to do now is move over to file export and click save as game ends in runtime so now let's select the folder for our game let's select this one it's called euphoria and this is the code name for this project and I'm calling the executable file and this uh, generates an executable file for us to play without having to use Blender at all let's call this one Euphoria and click save as game ends in runtime so it'll take some time but then let's take a look let's move over to the folder and over to the Euphoria folder and as you can see Blender puts all the important bits and parts for our game we have the 2.64 folder and some DLLs and we also have the Euphoria executable file now if we double click this one what we get is the uh, actually the Blender player playing without Blender being used and this is nice if you want to send your game to a friend who doesn't know how to work with with Blender or who can't bother to download and learn working with Blender. So I'm hitting the escape key and let's close this window. And this is pretty much it. I think that uh, it's an interesting result using the Blender game engine. And we have some low poly modeling, some nice little stuff for our toy and one more thing I'd like you to see is that we have uh, used the numeric uh, keypad keys for the game and I'm changing the top 3D view part into a logic editor and what I want you to see that is that if you don't use a, a keyboard that uses a numeric keypad and if you're operating on a laptop you can easily move over to the key field click it and then use any key for your own game I've uh, changed the numpad 0 here to age and now if I hit the P key and hit age you can see that by hitting age we have the uh, same uh, action taking place to those to the action we used whenever numpad 0 was hit in the blend game engine so feel free to use your own keys and I believe this is uh, pretty much it. You can clearly use this system here. You can clearly use the tricks here to create your own systems. You could, for example, uh, build a nice solar system using simple game logic and say a rotation for the uh, motion actuators where you'll be having the sun and the planets rotating around the sun using child pattern relations to link them all and using rotation for the simple motion actuators and I'm really glad I've shared my tricks with you people and hope you enjoy it and perhaps we'll see uh, we'll meet again in another nice little tutorial and this is it and thanks for watching Hello there, this is Dimitris Christou for CMI VFX and this is a tutorial that will show us a few more uh, bits and tricks about the Blender Game Engine and truth is that you can do lots of stuff in the Blender Game Engine you could write a, a big book about it and you might still uh, leave some things out and we have only touched the tip, the tip of the iceberg really in uh, building our system and I just wanted to show you uh, two more two or three more stuff about blend game engine I think you'll find them pretty interesting and this is a slightly advanced uh, blend game engine video tutorial but I do think that if you follow along you'll figure it out so let's begin I'm hitting the X key to delete the default cube and I'll hit Shift A and add Mesa Plane. I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Object to Edit Mode and hit the S key to scale my plane up. And now I'll hit W key for the Special menu and click Subdivide. 
I'll increase the number of cards from 1 to 9 and I'll hit 7 on my memory keypad and then 5 on my memory keypad to switch to the top of the view. Now I'll hit the A key to deselect all and hit B for the box select tool. Click and drag, select those vertices here and hit the X key and select delete vertices. Now I'll hold down the Alt key and right mouse button click here to select the row vertices. You can see it. And now I'll hit Shift Alt and S for the two sphere option and I'll bring the value you can see it at the bottom left corner to 1. I'll hit the S key to scale down my uh, circle uh, of vertices and I think we're good there. Let's scale it up down a bit more. Okay. And now I'll hit the E key to extrude, right mouse button click to cancel any movement for the extruded vertices and I'll hit the S key to scale them down and then G and Z grab and move them on the Z axis just by a tiny bit and E and Z to extrude my vertices on the Z axis at about there, ok now I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode, you can see my plane here and now I'll hit Shift A and add mesh a UV sphere. Okay, our sphere here is a bit too big for our uh, for our little hole, so I'm selecting the plane, hitting the Tab key, and I'll hit Seven on my numeric keypad for the top of the view. Hit the A key to deselect all, and click this icon, and this allows us to select the uh, vertices we can't see through the uh, viewport. And now that we have selected our vertices here, I'll hit S and Shift Z to scale them on the X and Y axis only. And I'll make my hole here a bit bigger. OK. I think we're good at about there. Now I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Object to Edit Mode and let's select our sphere. And what I'll do for my sphere is first of all, under the Shading tab here on the Object Tools, I'll click Smooth. And now I'll hit the, uh, let's first add the material, I'll move over to the material panel, click this icon and click new for a new material. I'll call this material 1 and I'll bring the diffuse intensity up, the specular intensity down and I'll click plus for another material, we want a second material on the same object. Hit new and I'll call this one 2. I'll increase the diffuse intensity up to 1, the specular intensity, I'll bring it down to 0 and I'll change the diffuse color. Let's make it a nice bright blue color. OK. Now I'm hitting the Tab key to switch from uh, Object to Edit mode for my sphere and I'll hit Control Tab for the Mesh Select mode and click Face. Now I'll hit 1 on my numeric keypad for the front of the view, I'll hit the A key to deselect all. Hold down the Alt key, click here to select this row of uh, faces and now Shift Alt and click here to select this row as well. And now we have the two material here selected and if we click Assign, we will assign the specific material on the selected faces. Alright. Now I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Edit Object Mode. And I'll also change the Blender Render option here to the Blender Game since we'll be building a Blender Game Engine project. OK. Now I'll move over to the Physics data. Click this little icon for the Physics, for the Physics panel. And by default here we have our objects in the Blender Game Engine set to Static. So now if I hit the P key for the Blender Game Engine you can see that our sphere doesn't move. It stays in position and now I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D viewport. And in order to make our game here work, we'll have to change the physics for the sphere from static to rigid body. And as you can see here, and I hope you can see it, we have this little dotted line. Let's make it bigger so you can see it. And this is the radius of the rigid body object. Let's set it down to 1 again. And what we'll also do, as you can see, we have options for the mass of the uh, object and stuff like that. And what we'll also do is check collision bounds. And by default, the collision bounds is set to box. You can see 
this cage here it's a box and as you can imagine we'll change this one from box to sphere and now we have a spherical cage around our object that shows the collision bounds we've set for our sphere and of course if you have another type of object you can select either box capsule cylinder cone and of course if you have a complicated mesh you have you can select a triangle mesh for the uh, collision bounds for the physics in the blender game engine okay i think we're good with our sphere here i'll hit the m key and move it to the second layer okay and i'll hit shift a and add an empty and this empty here will serve as a starting point for our spheres you'll see what we'll do in a while and i'll hit g and z and the empty here is a pretty important object since it'll be the one that will add the spheres to our scene in the Blender game engine. Alright, so we have the empty here in place. I'll hit Shift A and add my final object. It'll be a text object. Now I'll hit R, X and 90 to rotate my text here for 90 degrees on the X axis. I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Object to Edit Mode and I'll change the text. To 10. Now I'll hit the Tab key again to move back to Object Mode and I'll hit the S key to scale up my text. And I'm just scaling it because I can, I want to be able to see it clearly in my game. Okay. Now we have everything in place. What we'll need is split the 3D view and I'll change the upper 3D view here for from a 3D view to a logic editor. Okay. Now we have the text selected. What we'll do is add a text game property. Click this uh, button here. And I'll change the type of the uh, property from string to integer. And this will be a sphere counter. And for our spheres here, we want to use integers. We want to use whole numbers and not decimals and stuff like that. So I'm setting this to integer. And as you can see, I'm adding a text game property, but you can pretty much add game properties for every object in your scene. Okay, let's select the text. And what I'll also do is hold down the Shift key and select the empty as well. And by selecting both our objects, you, you can see here on the uh, logic editor that we can add sensors for the plane and the text. Okay, now what I'll do is oh, I've selected the wrong objects I have to select the text and then the empty all right now what I'll do for the empty what I first of all want is to be able to add the spheres will be we've built before in our scene so I want a keyboard sensor click add sensor and keyboard and let's click on the empty key field and blender is waiting for a key and I'll hit the space bar all right now we want whenever a spacebar in hit in the Blender game engine for the empty here we'll add an actuator and we'll be using the edit object actuator and what we want is to add an object whenever a spacebar is hit and by default the edit object is set to add object click and drag take the sensor output to the actuator input and what we want now is to add an object and this object will be the sphere. All right. What we'll also do for the added object in the Blender game engine is add a starting speed, a velocity for our object. And as you might imagine, we'll use some positive Z velocity to move our spheres up. So I'm changing the Z value here. Let's set it from 0 up to 13. And I'll also set a, the uh, Y value here for the velocity for the uh, newborn spheres. I'll set it to 1. And let's set the X velocity here to minus 1. And this is just the starting speed for our uh, object that uh, is added through the Edit Object Actuator. Alright. Now let's uh, take a look. I'm having my cursor over the 3D view. I'll hit P. And now I hit the space bar and you can see that whenever I hit space we have a sphere appearing in our scene. 
and as you can also see we have the rigid body physics and we have the spheres colliding with each other and with the plane, with the floor. So hitting the escape key to move back to my 3D view and what I want to do now is that whenever space is hit we have a sphere appearing in our scene but I also want my counter here to move down. So what I'll do is add an actuator for the text, click add actuator and I'll add a property actuator. And what we want for our property here is the add mode we'll be using the text property, the property this text here carries and we'll set the value here to minus one and what we'll do is take the controller output here and take it to the uh, property actuator and as you can see now we have something pretty interesting and this is the sensor here we have a sensor on the empty that triggers two actuators and one actuator is on the empty and the other actuator is about the text and this is pretty interesting you can also do that in the blender game engine all right and let's see if yeah, it works i'll hit the p key while the cursor is over the 3d view and i'll hit the space bar and you can see that whenever i hit space and let's hit the escape key i'll select the plane let's add the material to this plane click new and call this material plane and bring the diffuse intensity up bring the specular intensity down and I'll change the diffuse color make it a nice bright blue color okay and now let's hit P while the cursor is over the 3D view and you can see I'm hitting spacebar and we have spheres added and we also have the sphere counter going going down whenever spacebar is hit and a sphere is added okay but the thing with our game here with a little toy here is that if we keep if we keep hitting space we'll be getting negative values for the uh, ball counter for the sphere counter and we don't want that now I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3d view and again select the empty and hold down the shift key to select the text we want them both and what I want here is whenever our counter here reaches zero I want the uh, spacebar key uh, in the game uh, it won't be able to add more spheres whenever the counter is uh, reaching zero. So a way to do that is move over to the text sensors. We can click add sensor for the text and we can select property. Now what I want is whenever our counter here is I'm setting the value to zero whenever our counter here is not equal to zero it will fire it will bring balls in our scene and again whenever our counter is not equal to zero now if i take the output of the text sensor and make it an input for our controller here i'm creating a nice little uh, relation between those two now in order for those two actuators to happen we have to uh, have both the spacebar hit in the blender game engine and we also have to have the counter here being not equal to zero we have to uh, both of these should be uh, let's call them true for those two here to work let's try it out let's see how it looks i'll hit the p key while the cursor is over the 3d view and hitting space to add spheres to my scene and now if i Oh, it doesn't work. Let's get the escape key. Oh, I have to select the property. Okay. We have to tell Blender which property we're using for the property sensor here. And we're using the text property. And let's see it again. I'm hitting the P key while the cursor is over the 3D view. And now we're reaching zero. And although we do hit spacebar, we haven't got any new spheres appearing. And this is how we want it to work. Okay. Now I'll hit the escape key and you can also consider this counter here let's say it could be a, a weapon ammunition for your game you would use pretty much the same logic to this one and what I'll do now is I want to add a reload option for my uh, for my ball firing scene here 
and what I'll do is add a sensor for the text and we will add a keyboard sensor whenever we want to trigger something whenever a key is hit and I'm clicking the empty key field and Blend is waiting for a key and I'll hit the R key we want this to be a reload sensor okay now whenever R is hit in the Blender game engine we have the uh, text here we'll add an actuator and we will add a property and the mode is set to assign by default this is what we want we have to select the property we'll be using text property and we'll set the value to 10 and I'm taking the output from the uh, R hitting keyboard sensor here and making an input for my property here for the text and what we do want uh, here is whenever the R key is hit in the Blender game engine we want the property here, the text property to take the value of 10 again the uh, value of 10 will be assigned to the text property whenever the R key is hit ok let's see how this works I'll hit the P key while the cursor is over the 3D view and I'll hit the spacebar and we have our spheres here appearing 3, 2, 1, 0. We can add more, but let's see if we hit the R key now. Our sphere count is back to 10. And as you can see, the property here, when we hit the R key and the property goes uh, up to 10, you can see that we have again working uh, the, the spacebar is adding spheres and the property is also reduced by 1 whenever spacebar is hit. And you can see that although we uh, aren't using code, we're creating some nice, some interesting and slightly complex relation between our objects. So let's uh, add, uh, let's see another actuator, another interesting actuator here. Pretty basic, pretty simple. I'm just selecting the plane. Let's add some logic to the plane, although it uh, doesn't use it. And... I mean as an object, as a plane. So we want the keyboard sensor and the, clicking the empty key field and I'm hitting Q on my keyboard and let's click add actuator and we'll add a game actuator and the game actuator can uh, either start game from file or quit or restart game and stuff like that and as you might imagine for using uh, simply because we use the key, uh, key for the keyboard sensor this will be about quitting the game and now click and drag, take the output of the sensor and make it an input for the actuator and whenever Q is hit in our game, the game will, be, will end we will quit it now let's see how it all works, I'm expanding my 3D view and hitting the P key for the Blender game engine and I'm hitting space we're adding spheres and we're down to zero and we can't add more but if we hit the R key we have 10 spheres again and we can add and reload and add some more and reload ok and now if we hit Q we're brought back to the Blender interface and this is you know quitting our game so this is it, this is our little video tutorial here, we've created a nice little toy and we're introducing logic, a property logic for the Blender game engine and it's pretty important if you want to build a game, you'll definitely be needing uh, uh, properties for your game and I really hope you liked, you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching.